saying true stuff to you whilst naked. So my beautiful girlfriend just told me that what I said was great. So I'm going to say it again to you. And a friend had just been at a trot fest. He got into the finalists for trot fest and went to one of the workshops. They said that you should only make videos about what keeps you up at night. And I know what keeps me up at night. Sometimes I'm lying in bed and might seem strange, but all I'm thinking about is world electricity supply and demand. Um, <laughs> what I think about. Um, and I'm always looking at small scale, what, what, what can I do on a small scale? I want to get solar panels and, and wind and things like that, but I mean, that would just be a feel good for me. What I really worry about is, uh, is, is globally what we're doing with transport and electricity production and consumption and the, the, the metaphor that comes to, to mind is we, we, we face a lot of environmental problems uh, in, in the world today and it's, it's, it's all you know, human induced, it's, it's, it's not even disputed. But it's not going to change if we don't change the way we produce and consume energy. You know, one option would be for us to turn off everything in the world. But that's that's not going to happen. We have to change the way we do things and quickly. It's encouraging that uh, that the Europe and the USA and a lot of other countries at an ever increasing rate are putting on more and more renewable energy. I was just at Wiki Solar. Check out Wiki Solar, and you can see the the growth and uh, energy news. I'll I'll link that. You can see how much new new uh, capability is being put online. In the U.S., though, they've still got a, a long way to go before before uh, renewable energy is parity, as, as cheap to produce as new fossil fuel electricity. Parity was reached in Australia a couple of years ago. What do I mean by parity? I mean it's it's cheaper or the same cost to put on new renewable energy as uh, new fossil fuel energy. Um, but you know the, the metaphor to, to think of is. The world's pretty messed up right now, um, climactically, and not not to to be. I mean, you've got a balance between doom and gloom and, and optimism, and, and I think there's there's room for both. If we were to change very quickly how much um, and how we produce and use energy, then we could stop the bleeding. If you think of the of the of the planet as a as a, as a single living organism, as as hippies like to do. And think of Gaia as a, as a as a as a being that's bleeding. Well, if we stop digging up the fossil fuels and burning them at the rate that we are, we can stop the bleeding. There's still a lot of mess to clean up. We've still got uh, depleted forests. Um, we've still got fresh water with chemicals and all kinds of things. So by no means it's everything, but it's a, it's a great place to start. Um, we can stop the bleeding and then move on to the other things. But you know, cleaning up rivers and doing doing all these other things whilst we're still spewing out so much stuff into the air every day. I mean, that's got to be our priority: energy production and consumption. So, at a, at a personal level, we need to find solutions, and at a at a national and international level, remember the the atmosphere doesn't recognise international boundaries. I know a lot of commentators in the US say, we, we don't, we, what can we do about it? If other countries are going to keep polluting, then it would be pointless for us to stop. Well, they, you know, there's no international boundaries in the air. Um, so we just need to, to do things at the personal level, the national level, and the international level. And it's, it's all about energy, man. It's all about energy. The naked truth, true things said to you by a naked guy. Mm -hmm.